Zoe provided this monitor for the purpose of this review, but they don't get any input on this video. Now this one may look like virtually every other Zoe monitor from like the last decade, but this actually is the latest and greatest they have to offer. So in between these chunky bezels, there is a brand new 360 Hz panel. This still is a good old 1080p panel and Zoe still chose to go with TN. Zoe claim that their 360 Hz TN has way better motion handling than a comparable IPS panel. And of course, we're gonna check if that's true or not. What's painfully clear though right away is that the image quality is so much worse than that of a good IPS panel. You are not want to watch videos, edit your photos or even just browse through the web on this monitor. Everything looks a bit washed out and thanks to the bad viewing angles, the image looks pretty inconsistent. To Zoe's credit though, they very clearly advertise this as an eSports monitor that's meant for competitive gaming and nothing else. So I'm not gonna bother to discuss the color accuracy, but you can find the measurement results linked in the description down below in case you're curious. However, we need to talk about the color saturation, because this can affect competitive gaming quite a bit. This monitor is using a normal gamut panel, which has just about the color gamut volume of sRGB. Or in other terms, it just can't render very saturated colors, which makes your games look somewhat dull. Apart from the aesthetics aspect, this can also be a real disadvantage in game. As the color range is limited, there sometimes just isn't enough color contrast to easily see your opponents in game. Especially so when the colors of the character models and the background colors are fairly similar. And that's the reason why so many people use those vibrance tools or the vibrance sliders that are built into most monitors. And yeah, of course, this monitor has such a color vibrance slider as well. And it does a great job, but because of the limited color saturation of this panel, there just is not that much room to work with before the image starts to break apart. The Acer xv 252 qf for instance, which is Acer's 390Hz IPS monitor, has about 1.4 times the color gamut volume of this Zowie monitor, which just gives us much more headroom for color manipulation. So yeah, for actually seeing your enemies or manipulating the colors in such a way that enemy character models stand out, this TN panel is way worse than a good IPS. So why did Zowie still chose to go with a TN panel? Well, they argue that their fast TN panel delivers a much better and sharper motion clarity than IPS can. We're gonna look at the response time numbers in a bit, but the results from Blurbuster's UFO test already look pretty good, I have to say. Zowie surely don't have the best track record when it comes to overdrive tuning, but this time they really did a good job. The three predefined modes are all kinda decent. Yes, there's a visible overshoot in the high and premium setting, but it's nothing too extreme and the high mode is actually still usable. Not the best mode, but at least better than what we're used to seeing from Zoe in the past. In the high setting, we're getting an average response time of just 2.2 milliseconds, which is pretty fast. But yeah, the trade-off is a bit of visible overshoot. If you're not sensitive to overshoot, you could probably still use the high setting, but to be honest, you really shouldn't as there are better options. Cause Zaui decided to give us this amazing 0 to 30 overdrive slider, which is such a great feature that more monitors should have. And as you can see, this allows for very fine adjustments. There really isn't a huge difference between 14, 15 and 16 for instance. Though I find a custom overdrive of 14 to be pretty much perfect for competitive gaming at 360 Hz with adaptive sync and diac turned off. Now when you turn on adaptive sync, the overdrive values change quite a bit. The high mode actually is really good now with adaptive sync turned on. In comparison to the results on the right with adaptive sync turned off, we are really getting a much more balanced overdrive mode when adaptive sync is on. And Zoe managed to keep this performance throughout the whole refresh rate range. So AMA high actually gives us a true single overdrive mode experience with adaptive sync, which is great to see. Now let's pull up a few other monitors for comparison. The Omen X25 is the fastest TN panel monitor I've ever tested, at least until now. It still looks exceptionally clean and technically isn't slower than the XL2566 k but it's just a 240Hz panel, which looks blurrier next to the 360Hz Zowie. The Acer 390Hz monitor has an even higher refresh rate, but its IPS panel is slower, causing more ghosting behind the UFO and blurrier details inside of the UFO's body. So I'd give the edge to the Zowie. Okay, time for the big guns. 240Hz OLED. 
And I have to say that even though the Zowie has the higher refresh rate, the OLED overall looks a bit better. It does show slightly more motion blur, but basically doesn't have any ghosting, which totally makes up for that in my opinion. But Zowie still have a trick up their sleeve, backlight strobing, or DIAC as they like to call it. And it's pretty clear that this reduces motion blur quite a bit. Here's the unstropped image for reference. I really like that we're getting the full brightness and overdrive control in this mode. You can even combine DIAC with a custom overdrive setting. And these are the combinations that I find to work the best. As both DIAC High and Premium have the exact same maximum brightness, there's really no reason to not use the Premium setting that has the ever so slightly better motion clarity. Crosstalk towards the top and the bottom of the screen also looks pretty decent. So let's put the performance into perspective. These are two of the best strobing implementations I've seen so far, and in comparison the motion clarity of the 2566K really is on another level. Like you can even see the pixel stair-stepping effect on the lines of the UFO's body, which really isn't possible with the other monitors. It's debatable how useful this is in-game, but it's very impressive nevertheless. Zowie also managed to maintain a very high max brightness with strobing enabled. Over 300 nits peak is an insanely high brightness for this level of motion clarity. The strobe crosstalk though isn't looking that great next to the much cleaner looking Omen X25 that shows almost no double images. But it's also important to keep in mind that the Omen only supports strobing up to 144Hz, which is much easier to accomplish than 360Hz strobing. So naturally both the Zowie and the 390Hz Acer show more double images. In game though, these really aren't that noticeable. I've been going back and forth between Dyke on and off a lot and I have to say that I really like both modes. The clarity boost of Dyke is visible and is probably the mode you should be using when you're buying this monitor. Personally, I slightly prefer Dyke over the non-strobe modes, though I have to admit that I don't feel like the higher motion clarity of Dyke gives me a huge performance boost or even an actual advantage in game. This might be different for you, especially if you're competing at a higher level or playing faster paced games than Valorant. But also keep in mind that using DIAC increases the display lag. 3.4 milliseconds still is blazingly fast and personally I don't think this is something you can actually feel in game. At least I can't. But turning DIAC off gives you an extremely low display lag of just 1.6 milliseconds. This is with both Adaptive Sync turned off or on. So if you don't get crazy high frame rates far above 360 fps, it might be even worth turning on Adaptive Sync. This monitor isn't certified as G-Sync compatible by Nvidia, so Nvidia users have to manually enable G-Sync in the Nvidia control panel. But despite the lack of an official certification, G-Sync works great. Not 100% flawless though, as I was able to spot very very faint flickering in some stress tests. Not something you're likely gonna encounter with actual games, so I'd say Adaptive Sync is basically flawless. Keep in mind though that Adaptive Sync can be used in conjunction with DIAC. Personally, I prefer using DIAC in FPS games like Overwatch or Valorant, but your mileage may vary. Speaking of Valorant, these are the settings I find to work best for me. If you'd like to give them a try, you can also just download the settings to chef profile, which is available in the video description. Throughout the video, I've been showing a lot of clips with Zowie's own Valorant V2 profile that's available from their website. Here's a little comparison to my own custom profile. Zowie's Valorant profile is not the best for me personally, but I really like that Zowie have these profile for the most popular esports titles. And a lot of pros even share their profiles as well, so you can also just download and test a bunch of those. Now you probably don't want to use your weird game-specific settings on the desktop, so here are the best settings for a somewhat accurate image. I'd also recommend combining these settings with the ICC profile that's available in the video description. Now I haven't really mentioned the ergonomics aspect yet, which actually is something that's pretty important for an eSports monitor. These Zowie monitors are one of the few monitors that you can position very close to you with your mousepad or keyboard basically being under the display. If you don't want to mount your monitor, there really aren't that many monitors that have a small enough stand base to do this. Of course, this stand is also adjustable in height, tilt and swivel, and you can even rotate the display into portrait orientation. The height adjustment has a pretty good range. The low position is even so low that I'd be afraid to smash my mouse into the display. And yeah, neck pain might also be an issue if you have your monitor this low. Anyway, so is the XL2566K a monitor that's worth buying? Well, you should 
only consider getting one if you're really serious about esports. I hope it's pretty clear that this monitor basically sucks for everything else than competitive gaming. But if all you do is playing games like Valorant, Overwatch or CS, this monitor is amazing. The response times are top notch, the 360Hz motion clarity is great and the backlight strobing mode is the best implementation I've seen so far. Though it's important to note that we're hitting diminishing returns territory here. This 360Hz monitor really has just marginally better motion performance than a good 240Hz class panel. I'd even argue that a 240Hz OLED is on a similar level as this 360Hz TN or even ever so slightly superior when we don't factor in backlight strobing. You really have to use Zoe's Diag mode to utilize this monitor to its full potential. And even then, fast IPS or even OLED monitors really aren't that far off in terms of motion performance. And in return, those panels have way better colors, which also can be an advantage in game. So the 2566K really is the right choice if you favor small gains in motion clarity over colors and visibility and don't use your monitor for everything else than competitive gaming. Thanks for watching, man sieht sich im nächsten Video.